Good afternoon. And I'll call the nomination hearing to order. Today, the committee will hear from uh, Rear Admiral Michael D. Wiaki, who has been nominated by President Trump on October 30, 2019, to be the Director of the Indian Health Services in the Department of Health and Human Services. The IHS Director oversees the administration and delivery of health care services to approximately 2.6 million American Indian, American Indian and Alaska Natives. Operating in 37 states through a network of over 605 hospitals, clinics, and health stations, the IHS employs over 15,000 professionals and utilizes a budget of approximately $6.9 billion. Rear Admiral Wiaki was born on the Navajo Reservation in Shiprock, New Mexico, in a public health service hospital. He's an enrolled member of the Pueblo uh, of Zuni of New Mexico. He is a husband and father of three children. Rear Admiral Wiaki received his Bachelor of Science degree from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale, in healthcare management and his MBA and master, uh, Master's of Health Services Administration from Arizona State University. Ooh. Was that, was that for the Salukis of Southern Illinois? <laughs> no, we know. Uh, Admiral, Admiral Wiaki began his career in health, surf, in health with the United States Air Force. Okay, yeah, this is your second chance. Yeah. Good chance you'll get her support, <laughs> Admiral. Spent time as, he spent time as project manager for the Arizona Association of Community Health Centers and then later became a commissioned corps officer within the U.S. Public Health Service. Admiral Wiaki has risen to the ranks uh, from lieutenant junior grade to his current flag rank of rear admiral. Appreciate your service. Most recently, in June of 2017, he was appointed to be acting secretary of the IHS, uh, becoming the principal deputy director in September 2018. Since his appointment, Admiral Wiaki has been filling the role of IHS director and is responsible for overseeing the operating budget, workforce, and administration of this important agency. Just prior to his appointment, Admiral Wiaki served as chief executive officer for the IHS Phoenix Indian Medical Center. As CEO, he was the lead official in overseeing the largest IHS facility in the country with a user population of over 111,000 uh, Native Americans. The Phoenix Indian Medical Center serves as a hub for Arizona, Nevada, and Utah patients. Admiral Wiaki has received a number of awards and recognition for his work with the Air Force and U.S. Public Health Service, including the Public Health Service Presidential Unit Citation, the Public Health Service Outstanding Service Medal, and the IHS National Director's Award. He's a member of a number of professional organizations, including the American College of Healthcare Executives, Commissioned Officers Association, Military Officers Association of America, Reserve Officers Association, Association of Military Surgeons of the United States, and the Arizona State University Alumni Association Native American Chapter. Over 60 letters of support have been sent to the committee um, regarding his nomination, including from the Pueblo of Zuni, United States Air Force, National Indian Health Board, Seattle Indian Health Board, California Rural Indian Health Board, South Central Foundation, United South and Eastern Tribes, and the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board. I've included all letters received as part of the official hearing record. And we look forward to your testimony today, Admiral. Specifically, I look forward to hearing about your vision for IHS. I want to know how IHS is responding to the Dr. Weber sex abuse incident as well as getting off the GAO high-risk list. And with that, I'll turn to Vice Chairman Udall for his opening hey, statement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, and before I start, I just want to acknowledge that the uh, uh, president of the Mescalero Apache tribe in New Mexico, President Aguilar, is here uh, in the audience. And, and I think he's probably here with some of his councilmen and councilwomen. He's just newly become the uh, uh, president of the uh, Mescalero Apaches. Uh, thank you, Chairman, for holding this hearing to consider Rear Admiral Michael Wiaki's nomination to serve as Director of the Indian Health Service. By way of an introduction, I am proud to note that Rear Admiral Wiaki hails from New Mexico 
He is an enrolled member of the Zuni tribe, one of 23 in my home state, who was born in IHS's Shiprock Indian Hospital on the Navajo Nation. He's, dedic he's a dedicated public servant and a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. Throughout his 23 years of service at the IHS, Admiral Wiaki has demonstrated hard work and commitment to Indian country. He has received four IHS National Director's Awards, three Outstanding Service Medal Awards, and a Presidential Unit Citation, the highest unit award issued to a uniformed service. Admiral, your career has been a credit to New Mexico and to the Zuni Pueblo. Congratulations on being nominated to serve as the IHS Director. IHS has been without a confirmed director since 2013. Unfortunately, the situation at the service has grown even more critical in the intervening years. The crisis in the Great Plains worsened and spread to other IHS service areas like Billings, Bamedji, and Navajo. The Government Accountability Office added the service to its high-risk list of waste, fraud, and abuse. The Albuquerque, Navajo, and other service areas have had staffing vacancy levels shoot past 30 percent, and concerns over management practices have intensified as more and more information from the Weber patient abuse cases and reports of preventable patient deaths have surfaced. Now, perhaps more than ever, it is imperative that the IHF have a leader at the helm who has the experience and commitment to bring about real change. The director of the IHS is more than just the manager of a multi-billion dollar budget and 15,000 full-time federal employees. If confirmed, Admiral Muliaki will be responsible for developing IHS healthcare policy, ensuring the delivery of quality, comprehensive care, advocating for the needs of all Native Americans, whether they live in the most remote corner of Alaska or the busiest street corner in New York City, supporting tribal sovereignty and upholding the federal trust responsibility. That's why I view today's hearing as an opportunity not only to clarify your personal policy views and plans for reform, but also to get a firm commitment from you that you will fight for transparency, for the resources you need to get the job done, and for Indian country. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Admiral Wiaki, for you being here today.